This is Ethiopia, one of the hungriest countries in the world. But here, foreign companies are spending billions of dollars to grow food for export. An area the size of Britain has been handed over to corporations in the last three years. It's called a land rush. I'm in Ethiopia's remote southwest Gambella region to investigate claims that large numbers of small farmers are being moved off their land by the government. Now all this land for the next hour of our driving is going to be uh, some kind of farming, intensive industrial agriculture. We're driving west through Karaturi Farm, a new Indian venture, where large areas of forest are already being cleared to grow palm oil, rice and sugar. Are you going there? Hello. Hello. Thank you. It will be one of the largest farms in Africa, but most of the food will be exported. Populations are growing, so this has to be good for the world. But what about Ethiopia's poor? The man in charge is Kamjid Shekhan. So how big will this whole farm be? Phase one, 100,000 hectares. After that? After the second phase, 100,000 plus 200,000. So 300,000 hectares. hectares. And if I started walking at one end, how long would it take me to get to the other end? Uh, 100,000 hectares is about 121 kilometers. 120 kilometers, that's 80, 90 miles. 90 miles. That's big. Yeah. It's as big as Wales. So will you, will you plant, will you build a town just by here? Yes. Do you see that, those trees? Yes. There will be the town, uh, next camp com coming up. So that will be camp two and that will be 10,000 people? Maybe 10 to 15,000. Karaturi says it will build home schools and clinics for as many as 60,000 workers. But on one of their other Ethiopian farms, similar promises made by the government have yet to be fulfilled. In addition, we found they pay most workers under a dollar a day. That's well below what the World Bank says is extreme poverty. I think, you see, I think that you've, because you were the first people here, you've got the best land. I think you've got the, the river access. We, we never saw the land. Yeah, oh, you never saw uh, it? <laughs> they gave it to us, we took it. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> Seriously. You did not even see it? Uh, yes. They we, offered it to uh, you? They offered, that's all. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hi, Razak. This has to be the deal of the century. 1,000 square miles for just 150 pounds a week. Plus, they get tax breaks and roads built for them by the government. Now, presumably, all, all the trees, all the forests which yeah. we see at the moment will have to come down so yeah. you can plant it. Yes. Yeah. Is that inevitable or is that just...? It's, it's inevitable. Yeah. You have to yeah. clear the... Yeah. Yeah. Then there has, there has to be a road network Yes, yes, for yes. harvesting. So it's very mechanised, it's very industrialised, it's very and precise. You, you... Karaturi says their land was sparsely populated and denied displacing local villagers. On the way back to Gambella town, we passed a group of shacks along the side of the road, near where other foreign companies are moving in. This is Kami village, which we think is full of displaced people, but uh, we'll see. Well, these people clearly haven't been here for very long. These are very rudimentary tents. Around 250 people have been living here for eight months. Chief, thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you very much indeed. Are most of the people here displaced from other areas? Why, why did they have to move? I don't know. That's mom. The government moved these people and told them they would get a health clinic, a school, as well as fresh drinking water. So far, only the foundations have been dug. Okay, these people are pastoralists. They're quite used to moving backwards and forwards across land. Uh, what they don't realise is this land may be taken away from them forever. That would be very different for them. I'm going to the state government to find out how many companies have come to Gambella. Hello, hello. And we want to know how many people will be affected by the land rush. We've got three maps here in the investment office. This is the extraordinary map because it shows that for the last, for, for 10 years, 12 years, there's been just about nothing. In 2007, it started going right up. Since then, there have been hundreds, and I've just been told that the total number of investors in Gambella region is 896. Now, that is an extraordinary figure from absolutely nothing only 10 years ago. Kasahun Zefu is one of the department's senior officials. What countries are they coming from? India, 
Saudi Arabia and uh, China and uh, so forth. Can you explain why you are relocating villages? We, uh, uh, we relocate the villagers to obtain uh, clean water in one place, to obtain uh, uh, medical services. So the two things are very separate. One is the relocation, the deliberate relocation of villages. Yeah. And the second thing is the investment by the, uh, the foreigners. And the two have no link, whatever. There is no, there is no okay. link, yeah. So it's a coincidence. Yeah that yeah. villagers are relocating. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So the villagers, when they relocate, can they go back to their land? No. They can't go back to their land. Yeah. So it who, is who because takes it the is land? Voluntary, the voluntary relocation. It's all voluntary. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. right. Kassahun said as many as 15,000 people are being moved. But at the same time, thousands of square miles is being cleared. Great swathes of Gambella are being ecologically devastated. Carbon emissions will rise and wildlife will vanish. I had been told about a village not far from the Karaturi farm that had been cleared just weeks ago. Actually, the whole of this was the village. So it's not just the few houses which we see left there. All of this was actually a village pretty recently. There's, there's nothing left. They've all gone. And they've left the... Uh, the storage pots. We don't know the name of the village, but we do know that people were here about five months ago. Gambella is up for grabs, and foreign investors are not the only ones moving into the region. Wealthy Ethiopians from other parts of the country are also leasing huge areas of land. OK, we've just stopped the car because we found a small group of people who may have something to say about the burning down of this forest. Many of the villagers we met were too scared to talk to us about what was happening. But one man was willing to speak on condition we disguised his identity. Have you tried to stop the bulldozers? Have you tried to stop them setting fire to the ground? The farmer told me he didn't want to move to a resettlement village. Will they have to forcibly evict you? The man was frightened of being beaten up by soldiers. Some farmers have reportedly disappeared or been killed for speaking out against the government. Do you think you're in danger? Later that day, we returned to Addis Ababa. Ethiopia's government is desperate for development and jobs for its growing population. And you can understand why it wants to attract foreign investment to a country that can't grow enough food for itself. But I still wasn't sure if the land rush in Gambella was in the people's best interests. I put what we'd seen in Gambella to the Minister for Agriculture, Wanda Rad Mandefro. Minister. Can you, when we were down there, we saw a lot of evidence of people having to move because of the, uh, the investors moving into the area. Can you confirm that, please? By the way, there is no movement of population. Minister, with, res with respect, we found many villagers uh, who were frightened, who were worried, who had been told that they would have to move. It's their choice. Mm -hmm. Either to choose to have these basic services coming to the village, Therefore, it's based on their willingness. But of course, you know, they have to abandon their previous way of life. You cannot, you cannot mm -hmm. provide mm -hmm. any mm -hmm. basic services mm -hmm. 
having highly scattered uh, community. So you have 3 million people, 2.9 million, 2.8 million, who this year will receive food aid from America, from Europe, from wherever. At the same time, as you are trying to export large amounts of food and commodities to America and other countries. Is this not sort of rather complete madness? You said madness. But uh, it, is, it is not uh, madness and uh, it's the correct way. The government is saying that Ethiopia's poor will only become less reliant on aid if they give up their old way of life and that large-scale industrial farming in places like Gambella is not just the future but a development necessity. We've just come out from the minister and clearly he's hoping for an enormous increase in productivity in farming in Ethiopia. The danger, clearly, is that the companies take advantage of this, that they will grow what they want to grow and they will sell it to whom they want to sell it and the real benefit for Ethiopia will never be seen at all and the real danger for Ethiopia is that they would have given away their land for next to nothing.